episode number 254, Shack and Steel Camaro Revealed. Welcome to the Camaro Show, a podcast about all things Camaro and GM performance news. I'm Chris Frezza. And I'm Jason Debler. We're your hosts for this week's episode of the Camaro Show. Want to be part of our show? It's easy. Just leave a message on our voicemail hotline at 586-486-3182. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. And welcome back, everyone, for another exciting episode of the Camaro Show. I'm Chris. I'm Jason. What's up, dude? Oh, no, just hanging out, you know, doing the, chilling. Doing the thing. Chilling. Chilling, yeah. Still uh, recovering from all the food I ate at a Super Bowl party I went to. Oh, you went to a Super Bowl party. Cool. Well, yeah, at the local golf course. Uh, they got, you know, like the bar and grill there, and I met my neighbors there, and we uh, um, ate and drank and were merry. And I... I don't really think I paid attention to the football game, no. the Super Bowl at all. No. Me and Vito had, oh, Vito was watching the game <clears throat> and I was just kind of, oh, I was doing some other stuff and uh, I was interested in the commercials more like, like I normally am. So he was watching the game and he was, he was vastly uh, dissatisfied with the outcome. Who was Vito? Yeah. <laughs> I, said, I said, what does it matter? You know, just, I hate that quarterback on Kansas City. All he does is run. He doesn't even throw the ball. All he does is run. I was like, oh, so? I, he's not, how is you, he's your, not even your team. I, 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 was, I said, you should be used to them, you know, you know, clutching defeat from the jaws of victory. You watch the Lions, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, so. it, was, it, was, it was fine. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, the, the Kansas City beat the Nashville Titans, the Tennessee Titans, uh, I guess. So, you know, I, I guess I had a team to root for, but um, it was pretty cool. Now I'm back to watching hockey. Yeah. Yep. So uh, we have yes, the, the Super Bowl. We're going to talk a little bit about the one commercial that we talked about last week that we were going to say we're going to talk about this week. Yep. We're going to talk about a little bit about that, but first... What do you say we talk about some Camaro stuff, huh? Well, we got the Chicago Auto Show going on this week. Right. And uh, our friends from Muscle Cars and Trucks were there, and they got a scoop on what we've talked about before, but it was finally unveiled. Yeah, we were, we've been talking about this for, God, since we talked to um, those women. Uh, who were they? at um, From GM at uh, Camaro oh. Fest. Remember, we, we I, I remember specifically asking her about this. She's like, we we're not talking about that yet. And then as time has gone on, we've seen little bits and pieces about the, the, the shock and steel Camaro. And now we finally get to see live photos as they were, you know, unveiled at the Chicago auto show. And, and it's pretty cool. Cause it's a shot car. You can get either a shot car and it's got some steel, you know, like around the stripe down the front, and then the wheels are different. What do you think about those wheels? Um, I know you're a big wheel um, person. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of the direction that wheels are going, where they're getting more and more complicated. Uh, I just don't, I just don't like a complicated wheel. When I was at the C8 Corvette tour at my local dealership, I was talking to the Chevro- the the Chevrolet representative or accessories or whatever he was, you know, as part of the Corvette tour and. He asked me what I thought about the wheels, and I said they're all too complicated. There's just there's just so much going on. And look look at look at the Z the the fifth gen ZL one, that wheel, mm-hmm. simple, still good looking, simple. Oh, the fifth gen Z28, one of my favorite wheels, just because it looks aggressive, but it's simple. There's just I don't I don't know. I guess maybe it's just my style, but I I just prefer a simpler wheel, and that everything that's available is just a little too complex. So if you want to order this for 2020, this is what you get. You either you, you select a shock or a steel colored car, right? And then uh, you get the 20-inch blade designed aluminum wheels. Complicated. Carbon flashed, <laughs> um, carbon flash painted outside mirror. If uh, shock is chosen color, a center stripe is silver. If satin is uh, satin steel is chosen, the stripe is shock colored. And out back is a <clears throat> body colored wing spoiler with a contrasting stripe, keeping the shock steel theme. A black fuel door um, with a carbon fiber insert comes with the package, as well as yellow painted 
uh, Brembo four piston front calipers. I just found a spelling mistake on this article. Um, <laughs> black suede knee pads. <laughs> It looks like the image is broken, too. Inside the cockpit as its carbon fiber instrument panel frame and premium carpeted floor. It's a good-looking... I think it's a good-looking car, especially if you if you get the shock, because I, like I like that yellow. It does look good. You know, it's, it's got uh, that hue of green in it, too, so people keep saying that green car or that yellow car, and it's, it's a good-looking car, and uh, we will link this up in the show notes because you can go... There's a whole gallery. Uh, they took a whole bunch of pictures... Um, you just click on it and you can see the wheels up close, um, and everything else is like 23 pictures here. I'm not a big fan of the, um, the fuel door color. Never have been. I'm glad you brought that up. Never have I, been. I, I <clears throat> excuse me. I, I, it's such a good looking car and they break it up with a big black dot. Yeah. It, it, that's, that's all I see. It, it, it just looks so much clean. I, I, then again, I like a clean design. I'm just, I'm just that way. That's my yeah. style. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, you know, remember my my smooth locks? Oh yeah, yeah. Just to smooth every, just to to, to just, keep the flow going. You know, I still sell those. What's cool is I'm, I'm looking at the gallery right now, and they have a special little emblem right below the steering wheel airbag, kind of like how it said fifty. You know, uh -huh. for the seventeens. Except it's a it's a it's a picture of the car. It's uh, yellow, and it's got the yellow and the steel. It, it looks really cool. I just noticed Whoa. that. Wow. That's that is very, cool. It's very cool. Huh. Didn't even notice that. Yeah. So we will link these up in the show notes. You can go check out all the pictures. They're, they're pretty cool looking. Pretty cool. And then I saw this going around everywhere yesterday, and I wanted to bring this up because you used to be a Hot Wheels collector. I used, used to be, be yeah. a huge Hot Wheels collector. Yep. And this person found a Camaro that they say is worth more than an actual Camaro. Uh, an actual Hot Wheels car of a lifetime, they're calling it. And it's just this, like, white. And I don't understand why this car, <laughs> this raggedy-looking car, cost this month, this much. $100,000? Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because it's uh, like a um, – uh, I read the article. It's pretty cool. Um, it's because it's one of three known to ever have been made in that color. It's a white enamel. Um, it's, it's a, it was like a prototype type of thing. And in that condition, a white enamel car, three were made. That's the only one known to exist. And the neat part is is that you know, this, this is 1969, and uh, – it's just, it's just, it's just, first of all, the 1969 Camaro. Iconic. Or I, I'm sorry, 60, 68. I think this is a 68 Camaro. I don't remember. It's been, a, what, actually 67, um, <clears throat> is, is one of the most sought after Hot Wheels, period. You get one in, in perfect condition, it's going to be $100,000. Really? $100, really? really? It, just, it just is, yeah. And the sad part is, is that I had one. You had one of these? I had not one of those white ones. If I had one of those white ones, I would have shot myself by now. <laughs> um, I had a 67 Spectra Flame Camaro, and I want to say it was metallic or Spectra Flame green, which is very similar to the um, Hot Wheel, the first Hot Wheels Camaro that was mirror oh, green sure, yeah. at, at SEMA. I had one of those, and I sold it with about maybe, I'd say, 30 other Hot Wheels because I needed to make a car payment when I was a teenager. Hmm. Wow. Yep. I want to kill myself. Do you remember how much you got for it? A couple hundred bucks? 250 bucks for the entire collection. Wow. And there were some other ones in there that are probably worth $100 each. So Maybe even more. What do you think you would get for it today if you would have kept that? I don't know. I'm going to see uh I'm going to see what it's worth going for on eBay right now. Hmm. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see here. Spectra Flame Green. $56,000. Just kidding. <laughs> Would not be surprised. You're just gonna be kicking yourself in your own in your butt. Well, I had a lot of. <laughs> I know of, you did. Uh, you had <clears throat> of them, and I sold them, and I didn't make any money. I don't think off any of them. Um, just because I bought at the wrong time and sold at the wrong time. Man, I had some really rare ones, just not sought after ones. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Let's see here. Price per shipping highest for. No, I'm not getting anything here. 
but it's just it's just pretty cool to see that that Hot Wheels collections. Oh, you know what? You know, uh, yeah, eighty bucks is what one went for. So I, you know, don't have to kill myself too much. No. <laughs> this is crazy. It's amazing what these these old slash toys go for nowadays. Well, I did have a treasure hunt Camaro. That was from '95, I think. And I bought it for three hundred dollars in two thousand one, and I sold it in two thousand four for three hundred dollars. <laughs> okay. Let's see here. Let's see what those go for now. Maybe I'm gonna kill, want to kill myself. <laughs> Didn't really go up in value, huh? When you sold I don't know. It. Let's find out. Not not between the time I bought it and sold it. Crap. <laughs> they go for a lot more money than three hundred dollars now. Well, that's good. Over a thousand. Oh. Crap. <laughs> Sixteen hundred dollars is what one went for. Ooh. Wow. Crap. Hmm. <laughs> oh well, what would I do? I'd just sell it now and then it'd be worth ten thousand in a few years and I'd say crap as I just before I die. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway. Congratulations to that collector that, that found that. I believe he's been looking for it for a long time and uh, how did he find it? Uh, white enamel custom acquired as rare as Hot Wheels. Hong Kong version could be worth one. So to do with it, oh, it doesn't even say. Oh, just shows it. Pretty cool. Cool. All right, all right. Let's get out with some real cars. <clears throat> um, how about that Super Bowl commercial? You know, we 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 talked last week about how our our, our good buddy uh, Al Oppenheiser, um, he, when he went from uh, Camaro Chief to uh, lead the electric vehicles program over at General Motors, um, he was probably going to be working on something cool. And I think we saw the fruition of, of what, what has been being worked on in a Super Bowl commercial with LeBron James smashing a backboard while they teased the new Hummer EV, 0 to 60 in three seconds. I know. Was it, was it, was it, what was it, some obscene number of torque? It was like 1,600 foot-pounds of torque or something? Yeah, it, it, I, 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 <laughs> I'm at a loss for words. No, it was, uh, it was oh, we talked about this, and I, I still can't, I still can't uh, 11, fathom. 11,000. 11,500 foot pounds of torque. Right. <laughs> I can't, I can't put my brain around the, va- the, the, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not even joking. I'm at a loss for words at how much ridiculous power that is. So they're just teasing this right now. So they're, they're, it's basically like they're giving us little nuggets, little nuggets. And I'm sure as it leads up to May 20th, which I'm sure they're going to unveil here in Detroit because uh, what a, about a week a week or two after that is when the start of the new North American International Auto Show in Detroit starts mm-hmm. in June. There's going to be some cool stuff happening here in Detroit for the auto show now. Now that we're going to have some warm weather, maybe they'll do another Belle Isle unveil on this thing. Oh, my goodness. I think it's going to be awesome. I think it's going to be awesome. I, I I think so too. When when they moved Al from Camaro after a very successful run, yeah, I think a lot of us were like, "Wait, what are you doing here? You're you're disrupting a good thing." But as we've been talking about electric vehicles more and more over time, that we, maybe it makes sense. Maybe they're like, "Okay, take your talents, move it over here." When you want the I best see- of the best. I mean, yeah. that's what you got to do. Unfortunately, you know that 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 uh, a little little hurt when 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 he left from mm-hmm. the Camaro, and, I'm, and I know he was too. I mean, that's his baby. Yep. But man, it's crazy, well, crazy what they're doing over there. Crazy. Well, they probably said, okay, there's a reason for this because you're going to be working on this, and you're going to be working on this because uh-huh. I got to think that they're not. This is not going to be a one and done little 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 thing like the SSR. No. You know, no. this is this is just the beginning, and I'll still say it. I can just in, look into my crystal ball or imagine a world where somehow imagine. Al comes back to Camaro somehow. Well, well, you never know. 
I don't you know. know. You never know how th- how how crazy things work. I would. Uh, well, that's it's more wishful thinking well, yeah. than anything. I don't know anything else other than that. Right. I wonder if he does. Oh. I wonder if oh. I just got put in a drawer again. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know what the, the the thing about Al is that he's changing the automotive world. He's done it before. He's doing. He did it before with Geo. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, geez. Sorry, now I'm in the drawer. Sorry, Al. Now I'm in the drawer. Um, but no, he he did it with with Camaro clearly, and now he's doing it again. And I don't think it's going to be his last. No. He should be extremely proud of himself. He's, he's and the best part is he's just a good guy. He's somebody I can call friend. You know. That's 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 rare. That's rare. So we're we're probably going to be talking about this for the next couple months as we lead up to the May twentieth unveil of this car, truck, whatever you want to call it, EV. I'm excited. I'm definitely excited. Well, car and driver. I just did a quick search just to, just to grab that torque number again, and car and driver has a rendering of it. Yeah, I and- saw that. It looks pretty good. Yeah. If it's to be like that. It looks like yeah. Tesla and GMC had a kid with uh, Hummer being, you know, the little little action on the side. <laughs> okay. We got let's some start, uh... start a Hummer podcast. Oh god. The Humpcast. <laughs> <laughs> that just sounds weird. <clears throat> we got a couple of voicemails. Well, did we actually talk about the commercial? Yeah. LeBron James breaking the backboard. You said they didn't really show much. <laughs> that's it. Yep, that's it. Okay, yeah. And we played some of the, the teasers from it last week, too. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It, they said enough. All right, yeah. let's, uh, I see, I know we have some voicemails. We have two voicemails here. Yep. Yeah. Let's uh, kick it off with this one. Yo, 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 what is up, guys? This is AJ, the resident Mustang guy, calling in after a long hiatus. Um, just want to say, Happy New Year to you guys, to our listeners. Um, but what I wanted to ask is, I know I've mentioned something about this before, but don't you guys think it's time to bring the Copo and the Cobra Jet cars to the street, make them street legal? Dodge came out with the Demon, basically street legal drag car. What about a street legal version of the Copo? A real true-to-life street legal version of the Copo? and a real street legal version of the Cobra Jet Mustang. Let's take it back to the 60s and the 70s and have these monsters roaming the streets again. Um, I know technically the Copo was the ZL1 because they used the ZL1 427. But, I mean, come on, let's have a, a, a Copo badge street legal drag car. And a Cobra Jet street legal bag uh, drag car that you can drive to the track, drive home. Um, what do you guys think? Uh, I think it'll be pretty cool to see those uh, rivalries, especially since the new GT500 just came out and they just did the uh, the three-way drag race and the comparison. So what do you guys think? Um, I'm going to start calling back in more regular. Talk to you guys later. Bye. Hey, hey, hey. it's good to hear from you, AJ, our resident Hi, Mustang guy. Good to yeah, hear from haven't you heard again. from you in a while. Glad to hear from you again. So, he brings up an interesting topic. He he uh, he thinks we should have some street legal drag cars, kind of like Dodge did with the Demon. Maybe even like kind of like the Hellcat. Hellcat, I would call more of a drag car than a road yeah. race car. What do you think? I mean, we've talked about this before. Do you think there just needs to be another Camaro? That's just, it's a drag car. It's, you know, not as focused on road racing. Mm, Some more horsepower in there. And uh, let's focus on going straight. Well, um, I I agree it'd be really cool. But first of all, do you really want more people driving poorly? (laughs) I mean, let's, let's be honest here. Just go to any Cars and Coffee and watch the Mustangs wreak havoc on humanity. <laughs> um, not to mention, here, here's the thing, and I, I, I say this often. It, I close my eyes and I envision it. I remember when I was a kid seeing Chevelles and Camaros and hot rods with jacked up in side pipes driving around everywhere. It was just a yeah, thing. Yep. And now it's not. It's the Hyundai Sonata and the 
the Plymouth Snit or whatever. I don't know. But uh, Plymouth's not even a brand and hasn't been for a long time. But the thing is, is that if there was a market for it, then it would be yeah, there. Yeah. People, people, people right. bitch about the cost of a Camaro now. Yeah. Like in street trim, making a car lighter and faster costs money. Um, so, yeah, I think it'd be cool, but they could offer them, but they wouldn't sell any. It'd just be a handful of them that would get sold, and then they would say, well, we lost a bunch of money. Hmm. Uh, government, give us a bunch more. <laughs> I, I, I'm just kidding about that last part. <laughs> I also see people aren't as brand loyal anymore, depending on where you travel, uh, particularly American brand loyal. I mean, I've been to California a couple of times, and let me tell you. Oh, yeah. They, 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 uh, they don't care. They don't care out there. They drive Tesla. They drive whatever white Honda, Toyota, silver foreign car that, that, can, that they can go in and get cheaper than so-called American car. And... um. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, growing up here for, for my entire life, uh, the big three have always been instilled in you. And, and, and it's always been you buy GM, you buy Chrysler, you buy Ford. That's it. Um, but that's changed. That's definitely changed. Uh, and, and, and I don't know how that goes into um, how that translates into sales, too. Yeah, there's, there's way more competition way more competition. Well, it's like I said, when we were kids, it was Chevy, Ford, and well, GM, Ford, and Chrysler. AMX. I remember there's several uh, American people Motors. Had, oh, yeah. so many people had AMX cars at my school. AMX, I saw some Malibu. Oh, I'm trying to think of all the cool cars. Cutlasses, you know, if with the bumper still on them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Barely. Or, or a 2 by 4 Yeah, it was like a Cutlass Supreme. Uh my friend had a Chrysler Cordoba with a 440 in it, and that thing would roast the tires for blocks. <laughs> Wait, 900,000 pounds. Yeah. My other buddy had a, what was that? That was a Pontiac... Le Mans? Le Mans. Pontiac Le Mans. That's what it was. That had a 350 in it. My other friend had a Malibu, 78 Malibu, two-door which had a 350 in it. Chevelles, like you said, Camaros, um, Mustangs. But what I'm saying is is that just brands alone, GM, Ford, Chrysler, and a, like Datsun and Honda had a very small presence. They did. They did, yeah. Before Datsun became Nissan. Yeah. And, uh, oh, and then American Motors for a little while. Yeah. That was it. Mm-hmm. Now you, you just left, listed off a bunch of cars. Now list off brands, you know, Hyundai, Kia, BMW, blah blah blah. blah. I mean, yeah. BMW had a footprint too. And there's just they just had a small segment, but it was the big three. Yeah. That was it. Why are you di- driving a Dodge when you could be driving a Ford? Now it's why are you driving an American car when you can drive just about anything else? Yeah. <clears throat> <sighs> It's a different wow, world. we went it's, down a rabbit hole. Yeah, I know. It's a different world. Sorry. Yep. Sorry. That's all right. That's okay. We, can, um, we love to reminisce, though. Yeah. And and we, I want to know what you guys think yeah. about that. Um, and talk about brands and brand loyal and what we just talked about. Give us a call. We want to hear about it. And here's how. Hey, want to be part of this show? Well, we want to hear from you. Just hit our digits at 586-486-3182, 24 hours a day. Leave us a message, and we'll feature it in an upcoming show. So what are you waiting for? Do it now. And I do have one more voicemail here to play. Cool. All right, let's go. Hey, Chris and Jason, this is Charlie1111. One, 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 one. Hope everything's been going good. Uh, sorry, I'm out of breath the moment, run. Um <laughs> Heard your podcast in regards to the you know Z20 being a bargain. I always thought it's been a bargain for the past two years. And I'm just surprised they're not getting picked up. You know, in regards to that one that listing that you ended up seeing, I mean, I think the forty thousand dollars for that type of Z28 is too much. I've seen Z28 going for about thirty nine, thirty seven thousand with about twelve thousand miles on it that are kind of like garage queens. The one that you see, I think it's just too much. Uh, considering what the market is asking, because you can get yourself a 12,000 mile, maybe a 10,000 mile for about $45,000, $40,000, and I think that's a good price. I think for something that you have to get new tires, new brake pads, 
um, the wear and tear, who knows how much stress they put in the motor and also in the suspension, which doesn't make much, but, you know, for the price of the dollar, I think that amount is just way, asking way too much. If you're able to get it down to $30,000, I think that'd be probably fine. I think that's an acceptable offer. But if anyone, and you know me, I've been searching for a Z28 for the past two years. Now I'm just waiting for that right spot, about $35,000. So anyone out there listening that has a Z28 they want to sell, I'm in the market. If you want to get in touch with someone, shoot something to Jason or get in touch with me. All right, bye. Okay. Charlie, one, 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 one. I, I didn't realize he was in the market for a Z28. That's No, yeah, he, yeah, he cool. definitely did. Told me anyway. Um, um, so he makes a valid point because if you got to use Z28 – and you need to do a brake job on that thing. You know those things oh, are yeah. carbon ceramic brakes. Not yeah, yeah. You're gonna probably too, drop what six grand on, on the, brakes. It's it's crazy. Or or more. I I don't know. That's it is crazy, right? So right about thirty thirty thousand would be for a, a highly used Z28 would would sound about right if that's what the market is bearing. But yeah, these these cars are highly highly sought after right now. That's crazy. Well, for the right price. For the right that's price. The yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. You know what? <clears throat> I'm out of breath too because you're drinking Red Bull. I'm, I'm drink, drinking beer. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, really, I really like to you know get up in the morning and pound one down. <laughs> anyway. Thanks, Charlie. Good to hear from you, Charlie. Uh, looking forward to seeing you at one of the shows this year as, as usual. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Okay. Oh, boy. Um, <clears throat> need a beer? <sighs> I'm, I'm drinking this cinnamon Coke right now. Oh, yeah? How's that? Oh, I love it. I love it. Too bad it's done. It's gone. Hmm. So if you see any in the store, pick it up because they went away December 31st. Yeah. I, don't even, I, I work from home now constantly. Yeah. Like, I only go to the office once a month now just for meetings. I don't leave the house. I hate it. <laughs> you turn it into a hermit. Yeah, well, I got this big office that I use, and it's just, just me and the dogs during the day, and the wife is off at work, and I just work, and it's nice and quiet. And I don't go to the store anymore. and I don't have any friends anymore. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's pretty cool. Good to hear from you, Charlie, as always. Um, what else we got to talk about today? Oh, yeah, we've been talking a lot about electric cars, well, for a while, and we're talking about it almost in every episode now when you think about it. Almost. There's a really, really cool YouTube video that I came across in my feed. It's this uh, this channel that's it's pretty popular uh, called Engineering Explained. They got two and a half million subscribers, so they seem to know what they're talking about. Title of the video is Why Gas Engines Are Far From Dead. Because that's what we're thinking. It's like, you know, is it in five years or is we just going to see a bunch of silent cars just coasting around? Dude, again, Engineering Explained, they lay it out. Al's got a lot of work ahead of him. And the bottom line, it's a really info informational video. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but th what I'd took out of it at the, be at the beginning. They mentioned that in 2018, gasoline is still 13 times more energy dense than the very best lithium-ion batteries that we have right now. Now, I say that with the, I, me saying this. Do you remember when the movie Lethal Weapon came out in 1986, Around 7? There, yeah. Okay. It, it, there's one scene where um, where uh, Detective Murtaugh is, is on a cell phone a cellular, <clears throat> a cellular phone, <laughs> and he's got to carry the thing around because it's the size of an ammo can, mm -hmm. and it's corded and going to a handset. That was uh, what 25, 30, 30, 30 plus years ago. Oh, yeah. Look where cell phones have gone. Yep. You know, it's not just the size; it's what they're capable of. So, mm -hmm. in 30 years, within our lifetime, if technology keeps going the way that it does, it's gonna be it's gonna be long before we die that we're gonna see lithium ion batteries or another technology of batteries that are as equal in energy density as gasoline. Hmm. I firmly believe that technology is not going to decline when it comes to this. Pretty interesting. And speaking of that in popular mechanics in the same day, I saw an article that the UK moves to end sales of all non-electric cars by 2035. Yeah. <laughs> 15 years. I, I know I saw that. So do we think that, do they? Well, apparently they think that battery te technology or electric vehicle technology, f however they store the energy, <clears throat> is going to be that prevalent in just 15 years. I don't know if they actually believe that. I think this is more politically driven than it is realistically driven. 
Mm-hmm. Let's put it that way. I'm not going to yeah. get into politics here, but I, I that's what I think. It's one of those deals. It's it's like Apple removing the uh, removing Flash from the phones. Pretty much, you you have to adopt. Yeah. Well, because it ain't going to be available anymore. So yeah. get used to it, bitches. Yeah. <laughs> What's this got to do with Camaro? I don't know. That's the question, isn't it? <laughs> because we're not seeing nothing with Camaro for the future. Is this the future for Camaro? That's where I'm going. Again, wishful thinking, hopeful thinking that. Yeah. I remember I, I've said this. You know, we've been doing this podcast, a, a, our podcast for a long, long time, 14 mm-hmm. years now. Yeah. yeah. I've said a couple of times. I remember when the fourth, the 1993 fourth gen Camaro Z28 was uh, reviewed in, in uh, Motor Trend, and of course it was a glowing article then because it was great performance for the money and all that. The I remember the last line was, and this is I can almost quote it. We wonder what's next for the Chevrolet Camaro, possibly a hydro, hydrogen 28 hmm. instead of Z28 and H28. Yeah. Because they're talking about the incredible power that that LT1, all that 275 horsepower that that LT1 made. You know, I think it was Motor Trend the other was the other week put together some article that had it had a future Camaro being uh, compared to the new that was it the Mach E Mustang, where and they would call it an E28. Um, you know, you something go. similar to that. Um, can you see that happening? I don't, I don't know, but it it really, uh, all the comments, well, I would say the majority of the comments I saw about that article um, ha- hated it. Hated it. Like, <laughs> people just do not, they just do not want electric. They just, for At least a Camaro buyer does not want an electric vehicle. We fear what we don't understand. Yeah. I don't know. It was the that's, same that's going one from, way to justify it. Remember people going from carbur- carburetors to EFI? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fuel injection or throttle body, even throttle body injection. People are like, oh, yeah, y'all that can't crap. fix that computer there with the screwdriver. Fancy <laughs> electronic fuel injection. Man, I can tune a carburetor with my eyes closed using a sharpened, like a, with using a broken pencil. Yeah. Well, there's still a, an art and a skill to that. Yep. But it's 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 now it's kind of the buggy whip company. The, you ever heard that analogy? Mm, buggy whip. Well, uh, for a while there were no cars. There was just buggies, horse yeah. and buggies, and there were companies that made buggy whips. <laughs> right. Right. What happened to those companies when cars came along? Yeah, they they went away. Goodbye. Yeah. I'm excited. I will say this. I was I was also apprehensive about electric cars. Until I found out that Al was working on him. <laughs> that's that's true. Just because I know what Al is capable of. Yeah. He needs to let me know the next time he's passed through Nashville. So I can get him drunk pick his brain. <laughs> Got some right. fine Nashville IPAs for you, Al. Come on down. Sit in my backyard, build a little fire, talk cars. All right. What do we got? Oh, well, I think I think that's it. I think we're running out of time. Chris, yeah. can I can I ask you to link up those those two electric articles Absolutely. in the show notes? That video video is really cool. That's a neat channel too. Cool. Yeah, I definitely will. All right. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Uh, the whole, I wonder if we'll see anything more coming out of the Chicago Auto Show this week, too. Hmm. And if we do, we'll have it for you next week. So yeah, you ready to get out of here? Yeah, let's do that. All right. We'll see you guys next week. See ya. Say- Thanks for listening to The Camaro Show. Don't forget, drop us a voicemail at 586-486-3182. We'll see you next week. See, see ya. ya.